All right, in this video tutorial, we're going to be covering creating and using masks in Adobe Photoshop. Now, check the timestamps down below because we're gonna be covering quick masks, we're gonna be covering layer masks, we're gonna be covering vector masks, and we're gonna be covering clipping masks and even quick mask mode. So check the descriptions for to jump to specific sections for each of those mask terms. It's my opinion that masking is one of the things that can make you an expert inside of Photoshop. So follow along and hope you learn something. All right, now the first thing we're going to look at is just taking a look at masks in general. What is a mask? How does it work? How does it behave inside of Photoshop? So let's go ahead and get started. Now, there's one important concept you need to realize with masks. The term mask can be think of like a literal mask on your face. So if I wear a mask on my face, of course, it's going to cover up all of the things behind the mask. So a mask doesn't delete my face. It rather just hides certain portions of my face. And the same concept works inside of Adobe Photoshop, where when I create a mask, I'm simply hiding portions of that layer. I'm not actually deleting portions of that layer. So I'm gonna do a really quick demonstration to show the difference. Now, here I've just got a single layer here, and I'm just going to, I've imported this little picture here of some raspberries. And what I want to do really quick is just rasterize this layer so you can see the difference between the old school method of deleting pixels and the new method of using a mask. So I'm gonna right click here and say rasterize this layer. Now, before we had masks in Photoshop, you would actually have to come over here, get your eraser tool. And if I wanted to erase a certain portion of this, let's say I wanna get everything except this bowl, I would have to come in here and use my eraser tool to erase out those pixels. Now, that's okay, but that's a destructive way of working because once you erase pixels inside of Photoshop, you can't ever get those back. So if I continue working on this document and try to go back and fill these back in, they're gone forever. Now I'm gonna undo here, Command Z. Now the opposite or the new method, which is called a non-destructive workflow inside of Photoshop is using a layer mask. Now the easiest way to create a layer mask for me is come down here, select your layer inside of the layers panel. And then right below this little icon that looks like a half black, half white circle here, you just click that icon and that will apply a layer mask onto your document. So you can see now here I've got my pixels and here I've got the layer mask. Now the layer mask by default is the color white. That will become important here in a second. So now that I have the mask selected, notice how I can select the pixels or I can select the mask. Now that I have the mask selected, I'm gonna come in here with my paintbrush tool and do the exact same thing. So notice I'm not, oops, I actually am erasing. Let me get my brush tool. Gotta get my brush. And with masking, you use a brush. And if I come in here and paint, I'm gonna be painting with the color black here. Notice how it looks like I'm deleting those pixels. But in fact, I'm not deleting those pixels, I'm just hiding those pixels. Because if I turn off my layer mask, you can do that by right clicking the layer and disabling the layer mask. See how I turn off the layer mask and there's a big X through it right now? I've turned off that layer mask and notice those pixels are now filled back in. Another shortcut there is holding down the shift key on the keyboard and clicking that little mask icon We'll turn that on and off. Now you'll notice that I painted with the color black. Now there's this is the second important concept when you're using a layer mask to hide or reveal certain areas of your pixels. And that is black, the layer black conceals, the, did I say that right? The color black conceals, the color white reveals. So if you can kind of memorize that little limerick, black conceals, white reveals. So in other words, if I come over here to my foreground color here and I switch my colors to instead white and I paint with the color white, notice I'm now revealing back those pixels. So I can sort of do the opposite. I can paint with black to hide, paint with white to sort of reveal. And that's the basic concept of masks. They're always black or white when you're working with a pixel mask or a layer mask like we are in this instance. So they're grayscale. So I'm gonna be painting with black to conceal white to reveal. Now the reason why when I create a new layer and the entire layer is white by default, at least the layer mask rather, is because it's revealing all of the pixels. So if I select my layer mask and I get, let's say like, a, um, I can get my, uh, what's the name of that tool? The paint bucket tool is what I'm trying to think of. I actually don't use the tool that often. I always use the keyboard shortcut, so I can't remember where it's hiding. I think it's under here. There we go, paint bucket tool. I switch to black and click in here Notice how I filled my mask with black, therefore concealing the entire pixels on that layer. 
And the way that masks work is they stack with layers. So anything underneath a mask layer, in this case, my background layer has a color of white, will bleed through. So to kind of illustrate this, I'm going to switch this background color to blue instead. And I'm going to come up here to my mask. Actually, it looks like I didn't even get all of that. So I can brush that out. And I'm going to switch this back to white. So I'll fill my layer mask with white. I just used Option Delete on the keyboard. Now, if I get my brush tool, again, with black selected, notice how when I conceal that area, the background bleeds through. So any layer underneath will bleed through those now transparent pixels. Okay, and that's the way masks work. Now, if you paint with solid black, it's gonna be completely transparent. If you paint with solid white, it's going to be completely opaque or visible. And if you paint with anything in between gray, it's going to be partial transparency. So let me show you how that looks. So again, I'm gonna come over here to my mask and fill everything back with white. Um, so it's just revealing the entire layer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my brush tool here and I'm gonna start off with solid black, okay? So I'm just gonna paint a strip straight down here with solid black. And you can see how it cuts that all the way out. Now I'm gonna switch over and I'll paint with a little bit less black. So kind of a dark gray. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this three or four times. I'll paint with sort of a medium gray here and paint down. And then finally, I'm gonna come over here and paint with two more strips. I'll do something that's fairly light for this one. And then we'll lastly do pure white for our last color, which isn't gonna do anything, of course. But if I paint with pure white, nothing's gonna happen. So you can see if I zoom in here, I'm getting various levels of transparency, right? So there's some extra transparency there and less and less as the colors go on. And that's the way that masks work with grayscale. Now, if you ever want to see the actual mask itself, it's really kind of hard inside of the thumbnail down here, right? So teeny tiny, you can use another keyboard shortcut. So you can hold down the option key and click the mask and that will reveal your entire mask full screen. So you can really see that there. It's going from gradual grays all the way a little bit lighter. Hold down option and click that mask icon again to turn off that mask preview and you're back to see the layer. Okay. Now remember, because masks are non-destructive, I can always edit them. So I can come back here and I can switch back to white and I can repaint this area in and everything is just fine, right? So that is the basis of working with what are known as layer masks inside of Photoshop. So Photoshop has a lot of different masking terms. That was layer masks. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the second type of mask, which is called a vector mask. So layer masks work with pixels, black and white pixels, right? A vector mask works with vector shapes on a specific layer. So they're actually kind of goofy inside of Photoshop and they're not well documented and I actually don't like the, work, the way they work personally at all inside of Photoshop, but I'm gonna show you how they work. All right, now in order to create the second type of mask on a layer, which is a vector mask, you simply select the layer and you click the layer mask button one more time. So watch what happens when I click it again. So notice I have two exact same looking icons, but the second one is a vector mask inside of Photoshop. Now I do not like the way Photoshop handles vector masks at all. I think it's very confusing, uh, but this is the way they work. So the first one is the pixel mask. The second one is the vector mask. So if I want to apply a vector mask on this layer, you simply click it so it's highlighted. You can grab any sort of vector tool. Here's a bunch of vector tools inside of Photoshop. So I'm gonna grab the polygon tool and then you need to make sure you have the uh, vector tool type, I guess, if you will, set to path. So now when I select my vector mask, make sure you select it, and I come over here and draw out a path with the vector tool, notice how it now creates a mask on that layer based on that vector shape. And you can see over here in the, in the panel here, the, the really the only way you can see visually the difference between these two is the vector mask typically has this gray background with the white, and the pixel mask is always pixel based. So that's pretty much it. Now, once you have a vector um, object on this layer, I can move this vector mask anywhere I want on this layer, and it's only showing me that exact area inside of that shape. So vector masks in Photoshop work kind of similarly to like clipping masks and other programs as well, even though Photoshop has another thing called clipping mask. So that's how a vector masks work. Now, if you want to get rid of a mask, you can always just click the icon itself and drag straight down to the trash can icon and let go. And you say, yes, I wanna delete the mask. And I can do the same thing with my uh, uh, pixel mask, layer mask. 
drag that down and delete the icon and say apply. So now I've deleted those uh, masks. Again, if I want to re-add them, you just simply click the mask button again and you're, you're back ready to go. So that's vector mask, that is pixel mask. Now the next thing we're going to look at is how to create a clipping mask inside of Photoshop. So uh, with a clipping mask, I'm actually gonna delete this little one I created here and we'll delete it. And I'm gonna create a new layer here. So I'm gonna create a new layer and on this new layer, I'm gonna grab my type tool. Type inside of Photoshop, inside of most all programs is typically vector. Uh, but let's go ahead and just come over here. I'm gonna switch my size to something pretty large here. And I'll write out the words, follow Andrew. So I've got a pretty large font here and I'll stick that right in the middle. Now, a clipping mask basically means that you use one layer as the mask bounds for another layer. So what you can do here, there's a couple of ways to do this inside of Photoshop, but if you right click on the layer, you can say create clipping mask. And there's a million options in here. Let's see if I can even find one. Oh, there it is, it's right in the middle. Create clipping mask, see that option right there? Um, this layer is not letting me create it because I don't have a layer above it, but this layer right here is, so I can right click and say create clipping mask. And notice how, I'm gonna show you this, notice how there's a little teeny arrow that points down. That means that this layer is clipped to the layer below it, or it's defining the bounds to the layer below it, okay? Another way you can do that is, I'm gonna undo there, you can hold down the option key, this is the way I typically do it, hold down the option key, and if you hover in between any two layers, you'll get that same looking icon, and then you just click, and that will create the clipping mask. So I can hover up here and click, and create a clipping mask. All right, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this follow Andrew and I'm gonna move it below my text or make the text below my picture. And then I'm gonna hold down option and clip the top to the bottom. So that, so this uh, raspberries is now clipped to the shape of the layer below it. And you can see that the follow Andrew of course now has uh, this effect or outcome. And the cool thing about here is I can move the layer above it around all I want and you can see the, the different effect there or I can select my text and I can move my text all around too. And those two layers are essentially always clipped. Now you can stack clipping items so I can clip one thing that's then clipped to another thing that's then clipped to another thing. You can stack clips. We're not gonna get this fancy in this tutorial, but just so you're aware, you can have multiple things clipped on top of one another, uh, which is common when you're using uh, this menu right here. When you're doing layer adjustments or adjustments, then it's common to clip those in succession to a specific layer to have an effect. So that's definitely something common you'll do. All right, so that was clipping masks. That's how you can use a clipping mask inside of Photoshop. And uh, I guess you, you should realize that you can also have pixel masks, layer masks, on top of clipping masks as well. For example, I can come in here to my follow Andrew layer and create a regular layer mask on side of here, get black, I'll go over here and switch my colors to black and white, get my brush, and right, I can paint in a little mask just like I showed you before. Whoops, I wanted to do this one, right? I can paint that black to conceal that area, and it's gonna be hidden even though there's a layer above it clipped down as well. So all layers can have layer masks. Even the clipping mask layer could if I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna undo those changes, and I'm gonna unclip this now, so I'm gonna hold down Option and click that back to unclip those two layers together. And now we're gonna look at the next clipping thing or the next masking thing, which is called quick mask mode. So quick mask mode is, is a way of creating masks other than using uh, the, the black and white. Now, this is one of those areas, I mentioned this in a previous video in my Photoshop intro video, but people often accidentally get into quick mask mode and don't know why or what's happening. And the reason why is because the keyboard shortcut for quick mask mode is Q. So if I press the letter Q, notice that this little icon down here got pushed in. So I'm gonna press it again, so that's off, and that's quick mask mode on, okay? Notice when I switch into quick mask mode, my colors automatically go to black and white because it's supposed to be in grayscale. So if you ever like doing something funny in Photoshop and it's like, ah, stuff's not working right, what's going on? Double check and make sure you don't accidentally you're not accidentally in quick mask mode. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back in here and let's go ahead and show you how this works. So inside of quick mask mode, 
you will notice down here as well, when you switch over, this layer itself will turn red. This is fairly new. I don't know when they introduced this in Photoshop. When I switch in, notice how the layer goes red. That tells me I'm working in quick mask mode on this layer. So quick mask mode allows me to use my brush tools and paint the, the area that will then turn into a selection or a mask. So if I come in here and paint, notice how my color is red, okay? So I'm just gonna paint sort of at random here. So I'll paint over here. I'm gonna paint some over here and I'm gonna paint some down here, okay? Now watch what happens when I switch out of quick mask mode. So I'm gonna switch out and notice now those areas are all selections instead. So it sort of turned that into a selection. And then of course, when I have a selection, I can always turn that into a mask or fill a mask with that color. So quick mask mode is a way of painting selections instead of using the traditional marquee tools up here, right? Where you use your lasso tool and your um, elliptical marquee tools. These tools are typically done for selecting things. So if I'm trying to select this and it's a little bit hard, hard with your mouse and you're like, I can't quite get it. Well, switch to quick mask mode and then just use your brush tool and you can brush with black and white. It's just the same thing with uh, the way you can paint in and paint out. So I can undo and redo and get any areas you want inside of quick mask mode. So I'll just quickly paint through here. And it's the same thing if you paint with a gray color instead of black or white, you're gonna have transparency. So I'll do that and I'll switch out of quick mask mode and then I'll create a mask on this. So I'll just click my mask and there we go. So it created that little weird shaped mask on my layer. The only thing or only other thing I'll point out here with quick mask mode is I'm working with the color, I have the color red. So let me say I'm gonna zoom in way on one of these raspberries. And let's say I wanna select just one raspberry with quick mask mode. So if I switch into quick mask mode and I've got my brush here, I'm gonna take down the hardness a little bit so it's, uh, it's, it's a more hard, less soft brush. So if I'm trying to do quick mask mode in here, this is really hard to see, right? Because I'm painting with the default, quick mask mode by default has a red overlay and I'm painting on a red object and I can't really see what I'm doing. So if you're ever trying to quick mask on things that are red, you wanna switch your quick mask color. So to do that, you double click on the quick mask icon. So double click and it brings up the options. And notice how I have this color here. I can set that to something else. So I'll switch it to bright green and now when I hit okay and I come in here and start painting, whoops, paint in my quick mask, notice how I have a green overlay instead. And now I can actually make sure that I can paint, you know, up in those exact areas. So quick mask mode is pretty nice because you can really do some fine details um, in your masking to select just individual things and, you know, switch your brush size around and come and paint through here. Then you switch out of it and poof, you have a nice lovely selection of that area that you painted. So that is quick mask mode inside of Photoshop. So I think we covered them all. We did uh, layer masks, we did vector masks, we did clipping masks, and we did pixel masks inside of Photoshop. Now the last thing I'm gonna leave you with in this video tutorial, as you're practicing your masking, this is what we call a non-destructive editing. So it's a great way of working inside of Photoshop with masks. Use masks as often as you can. Try to always avoid the eraser tool if possible and use masks on layers instead to hide and reveal certain things. Uh, the last concept that I wanna leave you with is that a mask inside of Photoshop is just a selection, really. It's just another way of showing a marching ants. So I'm gonna do a dedicated video just on that single topic because I think it's super key to really understanding what's happening in Photoshop behind the scenes. But whether you're working with marching ants, right? like this and you're making selections with your marquee tools and the marching ants, or whether you're making selections with a mask and the brush tool, you're doing the same thing. It's just another way of representing it visually. So I'll leave you with that little thing to think about and uh, post any comments you have down below. So like, subscribe, click all the fun buttons, share, and we will see you in the next one.